We did up to 11. This is number 12. Can y'all hear me clearly? You all can hear me clearly? Yeah, we can hear you. Yes, okay. I can hear you clearly. Okay, I'll praise you. I'll praise you. All right. So let's see here. Number 12. Number 12 is bind the law upon your hands. Let's go to Deuteronomy 6 and 8. I don't know if I got any readers in the house, but uh, let me see. Deuteronomy. Yeah. All right, Deuteronomy 6 and 8. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be as frontless between thy eyes. So what, what do y'all think that means? Bind the, bind the law upon your hands, and the law shall be as frontless between your eyes. I, now, I'm pretty sure y'all seen the heathens with those little stupid, uh, excuse me, I almost cussed the stupid boxes on their faces. Have y'all seen that? No. Uh, y'all haven't seen those uh, so-called white Jews with the boxes on their heads? Are they, are they tied took, to their forehead? Are they took it literally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what what'd you say, uh, uh, Captain Maccabees, what'd you say? I said they took it literally. <laughs> yeah, they took it literally. They put some big boxes on their heads and stuff, pieces of, of writing paper in there with the uh, with the Torah on it. Ain't that stupid? So let's see what it's talking about. Let's go to Deuteronomy 11 and 18. What it mean, bind them on your hands and about your head. There's frontlets on your head. What that mean? 11 and 18, Deuteronomy 11 and 18. Deuteronomy 11 to 18. Therefore shall ye lay up these, my words, in your heart and in your Where soul. Where you got to lay them at? In your heart and Where in your you soul. Where you got to lay them at? In your heart and in your soul. Not on your, not on your forehead, but in your heart. Come on. And bind them for a sign upon your hands that they and may bind be as them for a sign upon your hand, meaning you, you have the letter of the law in your hand and you and you put your hand forth to do the law you do the law you have the letter of law in your hand you do the law and you have it in your heart read on that they may be as front between your eyes that you always have what's between your eyes somebody tell me what's between your eyes your brain your brain your thought process it's talking about your mind your heart, your mind, your soul, your spirit, and and the work that you do. You sure I ain't supposed to get open heart surgery and get them put on my heart? No, 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 <laughs> nope. Let's go to the, I, no, no. Let's go to <laughs> let's go to Proverbs six and twelve. <laughs> you say put them where Op open heart surgery, put them on your heart. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's nah, you know. no, sir. Six and twelve. <laughs> Proverbs six and twelve. A naughty person. I'm, I'm sorry, a, six and twenty-one. Six uh, and twenty-one. Proverbs six and twenty-one. Bind them continually upon thy heart and tie <laughs> them about thy neck. So, <laughs> bind them continuously. Have them ever before your heart. Have them ever, 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 ever on your heart. Your heart is your mind. That's what the Bible's talking about. That's what it means by binding them on your hands and frontlets on your forehead. That's what it's talking about. That was the 12th law out of the 613 laws. We got a whole lot to go. We got 601 to go. Let's go. Uh, this is 13. Uh, this is just, well, it's just, it's the same as what we just kind of went through. So we uh, bind them and write them upon the law of your minds. It's 13. Let's go to Deuteronomy 6 and 8 one more time. Then we're going to get a precept, another precept for it. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 6 and 8. 
and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, mm -hmm. and they shall be as frontlets between thy eyes. Let's go to Proverbs 3. Let's go to Proverbs. Let me grab it. Let me grab it too. <laughs> Proverbs, uh, Proverbs 3. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's read. Let's read one, two. Let's read one through four. Proverbs 3 and 1. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Come on. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. But what? Bind, bind them about thy neck. Come on. Write them upon the table of thine heart. Write them on the table of your heart. Come on. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of Yah and man. So when you write these laws upon the table of your heart, you're going to find favor of not uh, of the most high and favor of man and receive good understanding. I like that. I said, I like that. That was 13 out of 613. Let's go to 14. This is one everybody should know. We, we're going to try to tackle it at a different angle, too. Number 14, make fringes on the corners of your garments. Where can I find this law? Numbers 15. I'm about to jump out this window. I just said numbers 15. Oh, OK. All right. Woo. Oh, man. <laughs> Numbers 15, and what verse are we going to? Uh-oh. Is this is seven? Uh-oh. 38. 38. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep, you're right. Nah. Let's write it down, Cote. Write it down. So when somebody asks you, somebody asks you, you're like, number 15. They say, that ain't there. <laughs> Numbers uh, 15, 38. We're going to read 38 through what verse? Huh? I'll read all the way down to the end. All the way down. We're going to close the chapter out. Might as well. Yeah. All right. Numbers 15, 38. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the border of their garments throughout their generations. Mm -hmm. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. Mm -hmm. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Most High and do them. And that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes after which ye use to go a, a whoring. Mm -hmm. That ye may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your power. I am the Most mm -hmm. High your power which brought thee out of the land of Egypt to be your power. I'm the most high your power. All praises. Let's go to, um, let's precept it too. Let's go um, Matthew 9 and 20. Let's precept that, Matthew 9 and 20. Matthew 9 and 20. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment and touch the hem of his garment now the hem that she touched was the fringe let's go to uh let's go to Exodus 28 Exodus 28 uh 33 to see what that hymn was. Our Exodus 28 and 33. And beneath upon the hem of it, thou shalt make pomegranates of blue and of purple and of scarlet round about the hem thereof and bells of gold between them round about. So you see there, there was fringes on the hem of the priestly garment. This is, this is I said priestly garment because 
this is specifically talking about the priests, there was fringes on the end of their garment. Let's read on down to um, 36. Verse 34, a golden bell and a pomegranate, a golden bell and a pomegranate upon the hem of the robe round about. And it shall... I'm oh, sorry, yeah. I was talking oh. to my dog. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And, it, <laughs> and it shall be upon Aaron to minister, and his sound shall be heard when he goeth in unto the holy place before the Most High, and when he cometh out, that he die not. And thou shalt make a plate of pure gold and grave upon it, like the engravings of a signet, holiness to the most high. Verse 37. Yeah, this is verse 37 coming up. Okay. And thou shalt put put it on a blue lace that it may be upon the metre, upon the forefront of the metre it shall be. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, yeah, we can leave, we can leave it there. We can leave it there. Uh, da, 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 da. you know what? Let's drop. Let's drop. Let's drop down to thirty-nine because it was on the outside of their clothing. Verse thirty-eight. 39. Uh, th verse thirty-nine. And thou shalt embroider the coat of fine linen, and thou shalt make the mitra of fine linen, and thou shalt make the girdle of needlework. So these fringes, these fringes, was on the coat of the fine linen. Well, along with the embroiderer work, embroiderer work, and they had some type of design as well on the metria fine linen. Uh, fine linen. Uh, no, I'm going to go pee. Whoa, put you unmuted. Somebody's unmuted. Yeah, we don't want to go here. You go pee. Turn it off. Yeah, <laughs> you unmuted. Mute, mute, make sure y'all mute it. I'll mute you. Don't worry about it. All right. Okay. Everybody's muted. Okay. I'll purchase. this. Uh, any questions so far about um, what we've read so far? Any, any questions? Pretty straightforward. We talked about the, the, the line, the Law being buying about the hands, that means actually putting in the work of the Most High land uh, and putting uh, and uh, the book of the law being uh, on the frontlets of your mind. We went through, went through those precepts. Make sure you're writing those precepts down. Uh, and we went through the fringes. All right. So now we're going to move forward. 15. Law 15. Preach and publish your house laws. Let's go to Deuteronomy six and nine. All right, Deuteronomy six and nine. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. So, what do you think that means? Anybody, somebody, tell me what they think that law means. To write them upon the post of thy house and and on thy gates. What do you think that means? Remember, there's no there's no wrong answers. It's just I just want to know where everybody's mind is at when we when we're talking about these laws. So everybody knows are you wrong? So everybody would know how you're wrong. Yeah, that's oh, yeah, that's that's a good that's a good uh, that's a good answer. Uh, so everybody would know how what's from right and wrong. That's a good answer. Anybody else? I would say um, just the way you conduct your household. It will be obvious uh, that you're following the laws. Obvious that you're following the laws. So, so 
We got one instance where it says to put it on the frontless of your mind and bind it on your heart, on your hand. We have another instance here in verse nine, where it says, write them on the post of thy house and on thy gate. So is this, so is this one uh, literal or is it uh, spiritual? Yeah, I'm not sure. All I can say is I know the Jewish people put those little, I don't know, there's a name for them, but they're those little squares and they put them around their doors and they have like different Hebrew uh, writings in there. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. But I don't, I don't this know one, about that. This particular law was a physical law. And here's why. Um, we didn't have, we have all praises to the most high. We have access. We have physical Bibles that's been compiled. We have uh, the internet. And before the internet, we have tons and tons of books that have been written that we could go to. Bibles that have been written and compiled, literature that's been compiled that we can go to. Our, our forefathers didn't have this. So it's not like you could go to anybody's house and they will have the law there. So most people didn't have uh, all, all the books at that time that was compiled that had been written. They didn't have them in their homes. So what did they have? They would go to Torah on Shabbat. They would get a hold, either get a hold to what's known today as the Ten Commandments or uh, a subtext of, Tor of Torah. And they would bring those home. And those would either be in the home, that's what it means by write them on the post of your house or, and or, they were literally, say, say for instance, me, Deacon Kiefer, and, and Captain Maccabees, and uh, Brother John, say we all live in the community together. I happen to get a hold to some of the Torah, but it's only one leaflet I got, but it's four men. What, those, what would you do, Cap Captain Maccabees? What would you do? If you needed a copy of it, what would you do? Write it down. <laughs> you write it down, but you write it perhaps. Your house ain't going nowhere. Yeah. So you write it on the post of your house. <laughs> yeah, because I don't even think was, was paper was paper accessible like it is now back then. No, it's yeah, not. No, it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, I guess you ain't really I had too many pieces to write. I got a, I got a piece. Of, I got a piece of papyrus. I got a piece of papyrus. I got a sheet of papyrus that I got. Somehow I got it. I got it from some Levite that was passing through town. I got it, but I got, but I have it. It's in my possession. But I'm gonna share it with the rest of you brothers, and it got the commandments on it. So we're gonna write it down on the post of your house. We're gonna write it down at the post of Brother John's house. We're gonna write it down at the post that you can keep it. We so we all got it in our separate homes, but we only have a synopsis of the commandments. We only got the 10 commandments there. Do y'all understand why we got the 10 commandments now? Because the 10 commandments was a synopsis of all 613 commandments. Yes. Do y'all see that? Makes sense. Makes sense. You got 10, you got 10 commandments, they which all of the commandments, you can find any commandment that we had inside of the Ten Commandments. So I got the leaflet, but I'm going to share it with all the brothers in the community, and they're going to write them down on the post of their house. Because we commanded, as we're going to go further, we're commanded to get a hold of the commandments and keep them in our homes because they was not easily accessible as they are today. Not easily accessible. Uh, did I stop you? Oh, the gates. So 
we wrote them on the post of the house and on that gate talking about the uh, coming into the uh, inside our community. The borders our community, that's where the elders sat. All of the elders of the community, they sat at the front gates, passing judgment, making judgments. So they had to have the letter of the law in order to pass judgment. They sat within the gates. That's why you hear that all the time in the Bible. At your gates. Your, get, your gates is just where your elders were. Our wise men. Uh, let's see. Everybody understand? Y'all understand? Y'all quiet, man. Man, y'all what's going on? <laughs> this class is this class is interactive. Y'all got to talk back to me now. It makes sense now. <laughs> Where, what numbers was we on? Anybody remember? Fourteen or fifteen. Oh, it was on fourteen or fifteen. Uh, yeah. Fringes was fourteen. Publishing was fifteen. You know, said Deuteronomy six and nine. Oh, let's get one more on publishing. This is a famous one. You're hearing the, when brothers be street teaching. Let's get Isaiah 58 and 1. Right. Book of Isaiah chapter 58, verse 1. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. In the house of Jacob their sins. We cry aloud in the streets. You know, we cry aloud in the street just like we do today. We did it in our homeland. When our forefathers were sinning, boy, they knew how to sin too. Them jokers was done right, yes. Woo, man. Thanks, forefathers. That's how we end up in the hell we in now. <laughs> All right, uh, 16. 16 is gather for the reading of the law every seventh year we should gather for the reading of the law every seventh year now this particular law here is kind of offset you start off on this kind of law once you come into the truth but it's kind of offset because the leaders of, uh, when we were in our land, the governors of our land was, was set, you know, the time that were pretty much the Levites did. They set the time frame when the seventh year would come around. So let's go to Deuteronomy 31 and uh, 10. Deuteronomy 31, 10 through 13. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 10. And Moses commanded them, saying, at the end of every seven years, in the solemnity of the year of the, of the year of release, in the Feast of Tabernacles, when all so Israel... every every seven, seven years, in the year solemnity of the year of release, in the Feast of Tabernacles, when the Feast of Tabernacles came, because that was... Uh, like the year was ending, or, uh, you know, the year was ending. So the year did the end, but it was coming to a close. We're going into our winter feast months. It's coming to a close. Uh, in that seventh year, we had a year of release. And so if you had any slaves, Hebrews, uh, Israelite slaves, that is, any Hebrew slaves, we would release them out of their debt. And by slaves, I meant indentured servants. Say, for instance, I owe Captain Maccabees a debt. I, I killed his oxen. I, uh, however much his oxen cost, I couldn't afford to, to repay him his oxen. So I had to work off that debt. So I became a, a indentured servant to Captain Maccabees, even though I'm Israelite and he's Israelite. And then, but in the seventh year, not that I had to be an indentured servant seven years, it might have been in the fifth year when it happened. 
But two years later, in that seventh year, he had to release me out of that debt, whether I, you know, paid it off or in full or not. He had to forgive me in that seventh year of that debt. Not only that. But the Israelites will come back to their homeland in the seventh year. So they will, you know, they will be clearing up debts, like I said, releasing indentured servitude, and going over contracts and stuff like that. We had a whole system that was set up. Whole system that was set up. Um, the most high did this for us, and we were always prosper behind it. We were we were prosper because of this. Uh, what verse will we stop off at? Eleven. Um, let's read eleven. Let's read eleven. Let's keep, let's keep reading eleven and twelve. Eleven and twelve. Yeah, eleven. When it when all Israel has come to appear before the Most High, thy power, in the place which He shall choose, thou shalt read this law before all Israel in their hearing. Gather the people together men and women and children and thy stranger that is within thy gates that they may hear and that they may learn and fear the most high your power and observe to do all the words of this law observe all the words of this law in the year of return or the seven year release now as i said this was called the favorable year of the most high it was also called the year of released and it was most it was one of the uh the most um uh, radical and more remarkable ways that the most high um clear, cleared israel of debt make that 30 year so, mortgage sound insane don't it <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is how you clear debt you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> so what, whatever you owe was cleared. Uh, I think Jubilee was in uh, 49 or 50. 40, is that 50 years Jubilee was in? I think so. Uh, yeah, 50 years Jubilee was in. But every seven years within that 50 years, you also got released out of, out of debt from your brother. Now, other nations were still indebted. That didn't apply not of a serv servitude that didn't apply. Uh, let's see. Let's go to Deuteronomy uh, 15 and 12. All right, Deuteronomy 15 and 12. And if thy brother, a Hebrew man or a Hebrew woman, be sold unto thee, and serve thee six years, then the seventh year thou shalt let him go free from thee. So it was the your brother that didn't apply to the heathen, that applied to your Israelite brother. You you had to release him out of his debt. Y'all see that? God. Y'all see? All right, all praises. Let's jump up to verse nine, uh, Cap. Verse nine. Verse nine, beware that be that there, beware that there be not a thought in the wicked heart saying, the seventh year, the year of release is at hand, and thine eye be evil against thy poor brother, and thou givest him not, and he cry unto the most high against thee, and it be a sin unto thee. So don't do don't say, oh yeah, the seventh year, I'm gonna stall him out to the seventh year. <laughs> <laughs> I owe him the 50, I owe him the 50 racks, but I'm going to stall him out to the seventh year. And he, Either. by law, got to release me. Either that or you run up a bunch of debt in the seventh year. <laughs> <laughs> or either that or you run up a bunch of debt in the seventh year. Six, six years and 11 months, you <laughs> just start going crazy. <laughs> start going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and then go to all of your debt collectors and say, it's just, it, hey, listen, it's the seventh year. It's the seventh year, man. Hey. <laughs> but everything got to rest to the seventh year, even the land. 
wasn't no industrial gardening in the, in the seventh year. You, you had a little small kitchen garden in seven year to feed your family. But in that seventh year, wasn't no industrial uh, farm and nothing. everything just grew wild. The, the, the animals ate what was on, on the, what grew naturally. You didn't cultivate the land in no type of way. The land got a rest. The most I knew what he was doing. We done depleted the land out of all this nutrients. You want to just keep doing it and doing it and then try to figure, be wondering why you can't grow. Why I can't grow in this field no more? There's no more minerals in this field. You done de depleted it. That's why you got to use stuff like lime and uh, um, 10, 10, 10 and 10, 5, 20 and all this kind of stuff to try to replenish the, the minerals in the soil, build the soil back up. You didn't, yeah. You didn't grow with the death. There's no life left in in the soil. I wonder what year they came out with crop rotation. <laughs> <laughs> you ever heard of that concept? What, what year they? What year they came out with crop uh, rotation? Yeah. Year, year year one. No, I'm saying like uh, just as a, a general rule of farming. Oh, like for farmers. Year. Yeah, like when that was a thing. I wonder when they like figured that out, opposed to oh, when they caught up already, to it. Yeah, opposed to what we already knew. Yeah. You know what? I'm trying to Google. Right. It. You go, You about to Google it? Yeah, and see when it was like. Hmm. Let's see, first thing that come up is the uh, Roman Empire. Is when they what, what year what year was it though in the Roman Let's Empire? Because I tell you if it was us or not, you tell me the year. Say during the fifteenth century. All right, sixteen hundreds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that was that was us. Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah that was us we was in power at that time <laughs> well we was leaving we was just coming out of power it might have, so it might have been even earlier than that but we yeah, was just was. yeah we was just now uh, getting, getting through out of Europe uh, let's see here we was at uh, 1516 what was we at man I keep losing my place we on 17 now this is the 17th law out of 613. A king must acquire and apply the book of the law. It's going to do around 17, 18. Everybody know this one. Do around 17, 18. This is the one they use. Uh, no, this ain't this ain't the same one that they use. Let's go to uh, Deuteronomy 17, 18 through 20. Deuteronomy 17, 18. And it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom, that he shall write a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priest of the Levites. And it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life, mm -hmm. that he may learn to fear the Most High his power, to keep all the words of this law, and these statutes to do them, that his heart be not lifted up above his brother, and that he turn not aside from the commandment, to the right hand or to the left, to the end, that he may prolong his days in the kingdom, he and his children in the midst of Israel. So this is the, was the job of the, the, the king. That's why, that's why David was a man after Yah's own heart, because David was uh, not only the governor, the king of the people, but he was king and prophet. David did this law to the T. Now, a lot of kings of Israel, they didn't do this law, but uh, there was a few that did, and David was one of them. He was a man after Yah's own heart because David kept the letter of the law for the most part. He did make his mistakes. He did make his mistakes, but David kept uh, the law in his home, and he taught it to his children. 
Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, let's go to Second Kings twenty-two. I'm gonna jump around in it. You see, David was this is just one of the you know best kings for this, but there, like I said, there was several others that did this law. You there yet? Uh -huh. Yep. Uh, Second Kings one and one, two, and three. Second Kings chapter twenty-two, verse one. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned thirty and one years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jedidah, the daughter of Adiah of Bosca. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Most High, and walked in the way of David his father, and turned not. Aside so he did right what hand. was right. He did what was right in the sight of the Most High, and did the same thing that David, his father, did. This is a descendant of David. He did the same thing that David did. He didn't turn to the right hand or to the left hand. Verse three. And it came to pass in the eighteenth year of King Josiah that the king sent Shaphan, the son of Eliziah, the son of Meshullam described to the house of the most high saying. So let's stop there and let's drop down to verse, let's go to verse uh, eight. Verse eight. And Hilkiah the high priest said unto Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the most high. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan and he read it. Read on. Keep going. Oh, okay. And Shaphan the scribe came to the king and brought the king word again and said, Thy servant have gathered the money that was found in the house and have delivered it into the hand of them that do the work and have the oversight of the house of the Most High. And Shaphan the scribe showed the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest have delivered me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king. So he found the book in the, in the house of the Most High. He brought it to the king. He already said, listen, I took care of your business, but I did find it, the book of the law. Watch what happened. Read on. And it came to pass when the king had heard the words of the book of the law that he rent his clothes. So stop. And the king. Remember we, remember we said earlier that the book of the law was not readily available. Remember we talked about that when we first started, I believe. Even the king didn't have it, but he knew that it was the law for him to have it. This is why he rent his clothes. He rent his clothes in, ex in excitement. Like I got one. He kept, he kept the law, he kept the law as, as much as possible. He didn't turn to the right hand or to the left hand. He, he kept the law for what he knew. But then when they found the book of the law, he knew he was supposed to have one in his possession. Read on. And the king commanded Hilkiah the priest and Ahikam the son of Shaphan and Akbor the son of Micaiah and Shaphan the scribe and Asahiah, a servant of the king saying, go ye inquire of the most high for me and for the people and for all Judah concerning the words of this book that is found. For great is the wrath of the most high that is kindled against us because our fathers have not hearkened unto the words of this book to do according unto all that which is written concerning us. All right, there it is. Now, the king, the king said, we got the book. Now we, this is, book is concerning us. We got to keep these laws. So he was so he he kept this law and all of the kings of Israel was supposed to keep this law, but but all didn't keep this law. He was one that did. He was one that did. All right, all praises. All right, let's go. Uh let's see. C -c 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 let's go to Deuteronomy 31 and 19. This is the the 
the, the acquiring of the book of the law that we talked about, there's another law here. See, the kings were supposed to keep the book and we were supposed to, and we were supposed to as much as possible get a hold to the book of the law as much as we possibly could. Deuteronomy 31 and 19. Could Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 19. Now, therefore, write ye this song for you and teach it to the children of Israel. Put it in their mouths that this song may be a witness for me against the children of Israel. So when we had, when we didn't have uh, leaflets like we talked about, we didn't have leaflets, when we didn't have transcripts of the book of the law, we will we will write them in songs. And we was much like we did here in, the sl in slavery here, we always talked about promised land, crossing over Jordan. They called them old Negro spirituals that we sung here, but we did the same thing in our own land. When we didn't have the book of the law, we desired to have it. We would make songs about what we knew. That way we could pass them along to our children. That was the way that we passed the information down through song. All right, let's get one more. And we're gonna, and then we'll be at the temple priest. We're moving pretty good. Let's get uh, 19, that was 18. Now this is 19 out of 613, this is 19. We have to be thankful to Yah in prayer, praise, and deed before and after he bless you. Deuteronomy chapter 8, 10 through 11. Deuteronomy 8, verse 10. When thou hast eaten and art full, then shalt thou bless the most high thy power for the good land which he hath given thee. So you pray after you eat, not before. <laughs> really? Been doing it backwards my whole life. <laughs> Let me say it again, man. You pray <laughs> after you eat and not before you eat. We first did pray. <laughs> we we still pray first before we eat. <laughs> uh, well, let's uh, let's read the law. Deuteronomy eighteen one more time. When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Most High thy power for the good mm -hmm. land which He have given thee. So you you bless him for being full. Right. Oh man, I'm stuffed. Thank you, Father. <laughs> so we need to we need to pray to close out uh Passover <laughs> instead of before. <laughs> That's right. right. That's right. <laughs> exactly. Uh let's go to verse eleven and then that would that'll be it for that one. Right. Beware that thou forget not the most high thy power and not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. So don't forget this. Don't forget this. Don't forget these laws that we talked about today. Don't forget the breakdowns you heard today. Pray God that you wrote these precepts down, write them in your Bible, write them in your notes, go over them. And bless the most high for uh, giving you a greater understanding. So we got any questions right now? Uh, it was a very good uh, lesson today. I'm I'm really glad we go over these because I know we did it, be we had done it before in the past. But I just wanted to say it's so many things that we do that's the opposite, you know, in when we were in Christianity that we weren't supposed to do. Like, I know when we pray, you know how in Christianity they always look down and they pray with their hands 
uh, together and you're really supposed to pray up with your hands up to the sky, to Yah, you know, instead of like down and the, it's not the, it's not the same. It's, we were doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. Everything they taught us was like totally against our laws, what we were supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> even with this even with the praying just now I'm like wait a minute <laughs> but it makes sense you know but I think we were blessing the food you know like blessing it before you eat it to make sure it's healthy it doesn't hurt you you know yeah a, a blessed before and after in, in this land. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta well, you gotta pray for protection before you eat, and then bless the Most High after you eat. After you eat, exactly. <laughs> and 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 probably back then they didn't have to do that because they were making their own food. They killed. They, they knew where the meat came from. That's you right. know, it was already in good right. state. They grew it. They grew it themselves. Right. Yeah. I know my son and I were talking about that when we first got into the truth. And we, real, and we realized that a lot of stuff is backwards because that's their way, that's their contingency, contingency plan to keep us in sin so they can always rule over us. That's true. So as long as we're, as long as we're in sin, they, we, they find inequity in us and they can rule over us. That's right. Shalom to my sisters and brothers online. I didn't speak earlier. Hey, Shalom. Shalom. You're so, you're so right, sister. That's why they, are, it's with everything. They, with the pork that is in everything, it's, you know, they just, it's a way to keep us in sin. They force it on, you know, on our people. Mm -hmm. True that. That pork is, it's, it's hidden. It's in so many things that we don't even it just, I've know just seen about. something about, a, uh, in the, about the pork and the worm or something. Like they can't you can't, it's a certain worm that lives inside of pork flesh. Ugh. And you, no matter what the temperature is, you can't kill this worm. It, it survives inside this meat. So no matter how much you deep fry it, bake it, fricassee it, boil it, whatever, that worm is still, uh, is, uh, is still life in that worm and it, and it grows inside your body when, when you eat it. That's disgusting. That's disgusting. I believe it. I believe it. I just read something on that just the other day. I just read something on that. Mm. Shalom, is everyone there? We can, yeah. we can okay. hear you. Okay. Yeah. Shalom, this is Brother John. Hey, Brother John, I was just about to say something to you, too. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay, so you were reading uh, 2 Kings 21st, uh, 22nd verse, and I had a question about uh, what it may means to... Uh, what uh what it means to rent his clothes what what uh, what does that mean uh, is 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 what is what it's saying he tore his clothes oh he tore them so okay. 
Yeah, he tore him. Like, um, that was an expression of either joy, sadness, uh, mourning. Um, it is something that we do. It's something that culture, culturally we did. We will rent our clothes, meaning that, you know, it's, it was a signifying a tearing of a sort, a tearing of the heart, uh, a tearing of the mind, or 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 blissful a blissful occasion. It's just something that we did. It was part of the culture. Just just like I don't know if y'all you all remember. Do y'all remember when George Bush went to the Middle East, so called Middle East, and he was talking? Do y'all remember the guy? taking his shoe and throwing his shoe at George Bush. Yeah. Y'all remember that? Yes. I knew. That, yeah, that was, that is, that is Middle East culture, so-called Middle East culture. That's our culture. You read that in the Bible. You read that where the Most High say, I, throw, I threw my shoe. The Most High says that. I threw my shoe. It's a sign of disrespect. It means, it don't necessarily mean I want to hit you with my shoe. It means I'm disrespecting you. I don't have any respect for you. So that's something that we did culturally, and it's something that renting our clothes is is something that we did culturally for because we were miserable. Uh, we was being sometimes spiteful, and then sometimes it was a joyous occasion. Let's get Job right quick. Let's get Job one in twenty. Uh, I, is Cap Mac be still on here? I am. Okay. Let's go to let's go to Joe. Uh one and Joe. Yeah. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell Say it again. Upon him. Say it then again. Job, Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshiped. So Job rent his mantle, but he tore his clothes. He tore, he tore it off of him. It was a, an expression. You know what I'm saying? It was an expression he was having. I mean, he's, he tore his clothes. And here's the thing. You got, and I'm not saying anything bad about any other group of people, any other camps, or anything out there, assemblies or nothing like that. But you have camps that are saying shaving your head is a sin. They say that. You shave your head is a sin. You wouldn't sin, my brother, because you shaved your head. Let's see what the book says. Let's see what the Bible says. Read verse 20 again. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshiped. Now go, go to verse 21 and 22. Watch this. And said, naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither. Mm -hmm. The most high gave and the most high have taken away. Blessed be the name of the most high. Watch this. In all this, Job sinned not, mm -hmm. nor charged y'all foolishly. So in all what? In all what, Job sinned not? Job didn't sin when he rent his mantle. Job didn't sin when he shaved his head. Job didn't sin when he fell down to the ground and worshiped. That's what it's talking about. He didn't sin. So what do you mean? What do you mean shaving your head is a sin? He said Job was the most righteous man at that time on earth and he shaved his head so we have to be very careful about the things that we are calling sins that's not sins when we don't understand it let's go to ezekiel the fifth chapter i know brother john this wasn't your question but i just have to get off into it in great quick ezekiel 5 Nobody can, nobody can accuse Ezekiel of being a sinner, can we? Can we, can we accuse Ezekiel of being a sinner? Any, anybody on here, can anybody accuse Ezekiel of being a sinner? I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't take yeah, that leap of faith. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't take that. I mean, I wouldn't. I know, neither would I. Let's, mm -hmm. go, let's go to Ezekiel 5 and, and verse 1. 
Yeah, the most high and came down and talked to me in no dream. So I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I hate to show that level of arrogance. So. <laughs> <laughs> Ezekiel 5 and 1. And thou, son of man, take thee a sharp knife, take thee a barber's razor, and cause it to pass upon thy head and upon thy beard. Come then on. take thee balances to weigh and divide the hair. So Ezekiel shaved his head. He took the barber razor and passed it about his uh, head. That means he shaved his head. If he caused it to pass uh, upon his beard, if he caused it to pass upon thy head and thy beard, meaning he trimmed his beard and shaved his head. He trimmed his beard and he shaved his head. I wouldn't say that Ezekiel was a sinner, would you? Not when the Most High told him to do it. Is the Most High schizophrenic? Is he telling people to do stuff that he said don't do? Talk back to me, somebody. Somebody, y'all quiet. What's going on? Yeah, from what I understood, like shaving your head was a sign of mourning or, you know. It is. <laughs> yep. It is. It is a sign of mourning. <laughs> or you just went bald. I don't know, because I know, uh, what's that, uh, Elijah, Elijah was bald, because, you know, the children were mocking him for being bald. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you just, you know what I'm saying? They talk about, in Leviticus, they talk about being forehead bald. So I'm saying that means you know what I'm saying it's like losing the top of your hair at the top on the top. So here's the thing: you wasn't supposed to shave your head to idols. That's the difference. There's plenty of men in the Bible who had their head hair down very, very, very extremely low. But you wasn't supposed to you wasn't supposed to shave your head to idols. So when you get to Leviticus and it's talking about don't shave your head. If you go right to the next verse, it's talking about don't mar your beard. And to mar something means to disfigure it. So what they were doing was just like the Hamites do today. Have you ever seen them Africans? What they do? They, they put marks, put cat-like marks and scars and uh, 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 they mark themselves with, with, with uh, tattoos and brine themselves and stuff like that all in their head and their face and Get all marred lips and chin and eyebrows and stick stuff on the side of their head and all this kind of stuff. That's what the Most High was saying. Don't do. Yeah, because I think if you look up the word mar, it means it means go, to destroy. To, yeah, yeah, like to destroy. Like it's yeah. like you completely ruining this thing forever type of deal. You know. Yeah, yeah. That means you cutting in two. But it's just, but right when it said don't mar, it was said don't round the corners of your beard, or don't shave your head. It's talking about to gods, because it goes right into tattooing. That's what it's talking about. Don't do this to gods. Not not to groom yourself. You know what I'm saying? You you you, you can groom yourself. You can you know get your beard together. You can get your head get your hair down low instead of walking around looking like homie the clown. Don't mess around. Somebody laughing. I think I hear him laughing. <laughs> Y'all there? Everybody there? <laughs> yeah, I was laughing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm glad you. I'm glad you clarified that about the hair. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? You can cut it down low. You know what I'm saying? You you get it down low. You don't need to be scraping and marking and marring and disfiguring yourself. That's what it's talking about. That's all it's talking about. Trim your beard up. I know some some Israelites say, oh, you can't just let it, you have to let it grow natural. You can't trim it up. They be chewing on, they be chewing, they have peanut butter and everything all in their mustache. It's just it's terrible. Trim that joke up. 
great. <laughs> we ain't never run around here looking a mess. Some of some you go, you doing you doing it natural the way the most high intended for you to be. I'm just going natural. You look like a natural fool. Yeah, just re refer back to that lesson I did last week on uh, bathing. And yeah. And then, <laughs> and, then, and then see if it still makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it don't make sense. <laughs> we want you to be totally clean, but then you terrible too. Get yourself together. You can you can groom yourself. The most high is not going to have us dressed up. Like, you, let's get the Ezekiel 11. Is that, uh, yeah, it's 11. It's 11 and 16. It's 11 and 16. Let me make sure. Let me go to it. Did y'all not just hear how fresh that priest the robe was in Exodus? <laughs> <laughs> how bad that boy was. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, it cost $10,000. And then y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Ezekiel, the 11th, I think it's the 11th chapter. Let me make sure, though. I haven't looked at it. I haven't looked at it in a minute. 11 and 15. Nope, that's not it. That's the little, little sanctuary. I don't want that. Uh, let's go to 16. Six, I think it might be 16 or 11. I think that's what I'm saying. I said 11 and 16, but I, it may be 16 and 11 that I'm thinking about. All right, Ezekiel 16, 11. I deck thee also with ornaments. Yeah. I put that's braces it. upon that's thy it. hands and a chain upon thy neck. Hold on, let's go, let's go. Let's go to nine and read on down. Verse nine. Then I washed thee with water. Yeah, I thoroughly washed away the blood from thee, and I anointed thee with oil. So he got you together. Come on. Put you on some lotion. <laughs> Put you on some lotion. Yeah. I clothed thee <laughs> also. He, gre he greased you up like your mama yep. used to. With that Vaseline, <laughs> grease you on the... <laughs> I clothed thee also with brought up work and shod thee with badger skin and girded so thee. So he, he shod thee with badger skin. Do y'all know how much badger skin cost back then? It was rare. It was one of the most expensive skins out that you could buy. I mean, how often do you even see a badger? <laughs> yeah, it's very rare. It's, you know, it's the most exclusive. And, I mean, that thing is that thing is nice. The thing is nice. Read on. Um, and I girded thee about with fine linen, and I covered thee with silk. Mm -hmm. I decked thee also with ornaments, with and and put bracelets upon thy hands and a chain upon thy neck. He gave you bracelets and chains upon your neck. So boy, that this is Israel. He's talking about you, Shar. Go ahead. And I put a jewel on thy forehead and earrings in thy ears and a beautiful Amen. crown upon thy head. But you're supposed to just go all natural, not trim yourself self up enough, chewing on your beard. It's all kind of uh, bread and mustard and everything in your beard. You, you ain't supposed to groom yourself up. Come on now. <laughs> Verse 13. Thus was thou decked with gold and silver, and thy raiment was of fine linen and silk embroidered work thou didst eat fine flour and honey and oil and that was exceeding on, beautiful you ate, you ate some honey honey butter biscuits read on and that was exceeding beautiful and thou didst prosper into a kingdom watch this read on and thy renown went forth among the heathen for thy beauty so don't they do that to this day don't they try to dress like us we the poorest people on earth, and they still mimicking what we, how we look, and right. how we dress. Verse fourteen. And thou renown went forth among the, the heathen for thy beauty, for it was perfect through the through my comeliness, which I which Amen. I had put upon thee, said the Most High Yah. You, I made you look like me. That's what the Most High is saying. I made you look like me. Read on. But thou didst trust in thine own beauty and playest the harlot because of thy renown and pourest Come out on. thy fornication on every one that passed by. Come yes, on. it was. 
So we wanted to play the harlot and be and, and be just like the other nations when the most high said, I made you just like me and made you the most beautiful people on the planet. And, the, and your beauty, the way you look, your style, the way y'all, the way our women look, they they all the heathen is looking at y'all like, I want to look like that. That's why they go. That's why they go get silicone everywhere, get their lips did up, and, and, and everything else to look just like our women. Ain't and no now, way. and now the white the white man is doing it to look like the black man. He go get his pecs done. He go get all kinds of stuff. You know how many uh, men nowadays is getting their uh, body work done? Mm -hmm. To look like us, we we we're naturally robust. We look like real men. Black men look like real men. That's right. <laughs> we look like real men. Them puny little scrawny. Even our skinny, even our skinny dudes like Captain Maccabees, he's skinny, but he, he's still robust. <laughs> <laughs> You know your family right there. <laughs> Call me out, I see. It's calling me out. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't little. He's skinny, but he ain't little. He's still he's still a robust man. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> I know I just added that a little bit on there because Brother John was asking where did that come from, the, the renting of the clothes. You know, so that's just, that, that was just a culture of ours and I just added some more culture that we did about grooming ourselves and stuff like that. Yeah, and We went down a rabbit hole just then. That's yeah. yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's, that's it for me, brothers and sisters. That's all I have. That's all I have. You all hung on. You all hung out with me too. So you must have been, you know, interested in what was going on because you guys hung out with me tonight. Brother John. Yes, I'm here, bro, uh, sister. <clears throat> How you doing? I'm all right. You ready to take the million? Am I ready to who? Take the million. Take the billion. <laughs> yeah, you play the number. Oh, oh. <laughs> I tried to play the other day. It wouldn't let me go through, so I just left it alone. I, I just left the ticket there. I said, oh, well, I ain't going to bother. <laughs> I've never seen a lottery ticket that I didn't go through. <laughs> okay. You might have walked away from your mega millions, man. Yeah, I saw the numbers, the numbers that I selected, they didn't hit. So, you know, I guess somebody else will hit it one of these days. Well, they all put into the tune, eh? Yeah, that was a thorough, thorough lesson. Uh, you you really gave a thorough uh, background on the uh, on the renting of the clo renting of the clothing, mm -hmm. and you know how we're supposed to be uh, a replica of the Most High. I really appreciated that, and I'm, I'm still enjoying the uh, the lesson of the uh, the laws and the commandments. So this is this is really very good. All praises. Yeah, we was doing them for a minute, Coach Danielle. Remember, we was going over them at the beginning of the lessons, doing Shabbat. Then we'll go through the lessons. But since you asked me about a week or so ago, you asked me about them. I said, yeah, we didn't get them in a while. So we just going to go through uh, all 613 of them. So every time, every other week, I guess, uh, we'll be uh, going through it. All praises. You know, all praises, but we got a long way to go. We we, we did the first twenty though. We did the first twenty. Mm -hmm. All praises for that. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We got less than 600. Six, what we got, <laughs> but what's seven? What's seven from 600? Sorry. 593? <laughs> yep. Yeah. We got we got 593 to go, y'all. 593 to go. <laughs> All praises. <crazy. laughs> uh-huh. All right, that's my spiel for the night. I hope y'all enjoy the rest of your night. Have a smile upon you and give you peace. Shalom, shalom to you, my brothers and my sisters. We'll see you on Thursday at six o'clock. Be there or be square. Captain Maccabees is on uh on the lesson for Thursday. We're looking forward to it, brother. I know you're gonna take us down through that. Yep. <laughs> I got something Probably. cooking up. Yeah, okay. yeah, I know you. I know you. I know you. The power won't fall down from the heavens on Thursday. Yeah, that last that last lesson got me up to two or three two or three showers a day now. <laughs> <laughs> that last lesson was fire that he did. What it was fire. Sure. <laughs> it was. Yeah, I'll be ranting and raving about you too, brother. I'll be bragging on you. I do. The water. I, I, I tell uh, I told True Nation about you and everything, man. I said he he's a captain. And he gonna stay a captain in that ranking too, right? Uh, and then he's gonna move on from there. That's what he's gonna do. But this, this brother's really doing well. Really coming along good. You know. Now I'm expecting him to do great things up there in Detroit and. He gonna uh he gonna run that school up there once we get it uh, get it together. He's gonna run that school up there. Yep, that shouldn't shouldn't be too much of a problem. I know they ain't gonna give you no problem. They bet not give you no problem. <laughs> <laughs> All praise to the Most High. Okay, brothers and sisters, we'll be uh, talking to you real soon. All Thursday. Praise. Thursday. Come back Thursday. All right. Shalom, shalom. Okay. Shalom, shalom. shalom.